So, in summary, I want you to remember that it's the goals that we want to focus on, user goals, not just the features of a product. You can have a product that has a bazillion features. If it doesn't meet what the user needs, all the features in the world are not going to help. So, let me give you a quick example. Software apps that you have on your handhelds. How robust do they tend to be when it comes to features compared to something on a desktop? They have a lot more, significantly fewer, about the same. What do you think? Sign right, significantly fewer. Now, do you know why that is? Um, well, I imagine that, of course, uh, processing power in the, in the desktop computer is not comparable to a handheld uh, uh, CPU as well. Um, it has to use less resources of the, of the CPU, less battery. So it's working with less, but it has to do more at the same time. So it's working with fewer resources. Right? You're dealing with battery power, right? you're dealing with slower processing speed, less memory, assuming you have a nice new desktop and not one from 10 years ago, in which case your handheld, by the way, is pow more powerful. Anything else? The there's a difference in size, so there's a difference in the physical specification. Anything else? Input methods are more restrictive. Input methods are more restrictive. Unless you want to carry around one of those foldable keyboards. Do you want to know what the number one reason is that your apps have fewer features? Because it's based on what users want to use the apps for and what they can remember they need to use the apps for. There have been numerous studies that have looked at what we as users want in apps. And there have been companies that have created apps that can do almost anything, right? Almost as much as what can be done on a desktop. And users didn't like it. It was too complex. We don't tend to sit down like this and work on our handhelds for hours like we do at a desktop. I know some people who are great at like the thumb typing. Yeah, well, that's not me. Even those, you know, even those people, you, you know, if you need to, some, to really concentrate on something, we'll use a laptop, we'll use a desktop. In some cases, we'll use a tablet. By looking at the user goals in terms of why we use handhelds and how we use them, that is how we've gotten to a place where we can develop really good apps that make people happy and meet their needs. So. <clears throat> Reducing a product's definition to list of features and functions ignores the possibility of using technologies to serve human needs and goals. Interaction design is not guesswork. There are a lot of tools out there that already exist. There are a lot of guidelines out there that already exist. We've talked about some. We're going to talk about more after the midterm. And goal-directed design is a powerful tool for answering the most important questions that come up during the definition and design of a digital product. Remember, it's not just a set of features. Now, one of the things I like to do at the end of this lecture is make it a little bit more real, because we've talked about goal-directed design and all this stuff, right? And you can have a great understanding of the concept. How do you apply it? Kind of hard, right? So let's go through some of the types of questions that you would actually ask to try to help apply some of this. So users, who are my users? What are my users trying to accomplish? Remember, that's in terms of goals. How do my users think about what they're trying to accomplish? Because remember, it's all about how we perceive, how we process information, what we think about it. What kind of experiences do, find, do users find appealing and rewarding? If I find something rewarding, I'm more likely to engage in it. Okay, the product. Here are some questions. How should, how should my product behave? <clears throat> you didn't see that. So how should my product behave? What form should my product take? How will users interact with my product? How can my product's functions be most effectively organized? 
Sometimes people look at this and they're like, huh? And you know what I remind them of? Whenever Microsoft Office updates Word and they move stuff around, that's called organization. Think about it. And then some questions when it comes to interaction between users and the product. Excuse me. How will my product introduce itself to first time users? How can my product put an understandable, appealing, and controllable face on technology? Keeping in mind that most people are not as comfortable with technology as we are. A lot of people think it's magic. How can my product deal with problems that users encounter? This is something that we tend to forget about. How will my product help infrequent and inexperienced users understand how to accomplish their goals? Keyword is their goals. Not a task, their goals. How can my product provide sufficient depth and power for expert users? Now, imagine trying to design something that's going to be perfect for the beginner and perfect for an expert. How easy is that, do you think? Not so much. But we will be talking about that. All right, any questions? You guys all got it? All right. 